Hello everybody, my name is Emelson. I'm from Danville Signal. Uh, today, I, want, I just want to show you how to use Audio Weaver to make a very simple DSP based crossover. What you see on the screen right now is this is what we call the Audio Weaver server, and on, at the back is what we call the canvas. So, uh, let me show you how, you how we can easily make uh, using Audio Weaver a very simple DSP based crossover. So at first I'm going to connect to my target. Um, I'm using a Danville Signal Snowbird and you can see here I have one input and two output channels. Right now it just means that I'm currently connected to my target. So if I go to the canvas the left side represents the input uh, channel which is Physically, it's an XLR connection, and on the right side, there are all the out output channels. To make a simple crossover, uh, on, uh, on, the, on this side here, I'm going to type in crossover. Uh, I'm going to drag this module right here called the crossover filter, and I am just going to connect the input side to that and those two channels. Um, so I'm going to hit play or run and I'm going to inspect the server uh, and you notice this yellow bar is representing what the DSP is currently doing which is running at 8% of what it can do. Uh, you also notice when we ch when I change when I hit that run button, the uh, the background changed from uh, a grid to a solid background. So I'm gonna hit um, I'm gonna hit halt and it went back to design mode. Let me show you a couple of things about this crossover filter. Um, so you, you can think about it as the uh, audio signal coming this way and it's splitting it to all the low frequencies and the high frequencies. So it just means you route your tweeter to that channel and your woofer over there. If I double click this guy, um, you can you can put your uh, crossover frequency depending on your physical driver. So I'm just gonna place this at 500 Hertz. It all depends on what drivers you're using, of course. So uh, I'm going to right click on it and hit view properties and see more related to this module. I'm going to hit arguments. Here you can change uh, the order of the, the crossover. I'm going to change it to a fourth order. And we also recommend using the high precision feature. I'm going to turn that on. Close this guy. Um, and I hit play again still running good now that so basically we we made the, the simp a simplest form of the crossover uh, but let's not stop there so let's talk about we can also time align the drivers uh, and we can do that by introducing a delay and most likely because of the depending how you place the tweeter and the woofer most likely there's going to be a delay on the tweeter depending on how you mount it on your baffle i'm going to delete this line i am gonna drag um, a sample delay module uh, before i connect that it says 100 samples i'm going to change it to 500 samples there that just means when I double click this one your control is from 0 to 500 I'm going to close this guy and you determine you determine somehow through a measurement that you need to delay it by 58 or 60 samples for simp simplicity connect that in move this a little bit there to make it a little bit prettier Let's 
fill it again you notice that we're filling in more of these bars because we're using um, more modules and also the CPU uh, usage went up a little bit so that's how you time align the other thing that I see routinely is you want to correct some imperfections in the frequency response and how would people do that is doing us is adding a second order filter second order filter and there's a couple of choices here I'm gonna pick this second order filter precise okay I also want to show this SOF cascade so if I double click a module you'll see the inspector so this is an instance of an IIR filter and what you can do is you can select what it does and change the center frequency the Q and we're gonna use that later but I also want to show the SOF cascade so let me see here if I it's only one instance and let me change the properties so that arguments I need four stages and if I view the inspector it means I have four instances of this individual second order filter that means if I have more frequencies I want to correct I can just use in either a cascaded one or multiple instances of this single one so for simplicity let me show you how to make a peak EQ correction I'm gonna delete that put this in line and somehow you you made a measurement and you determine your crossover was at 500 and there was uh, a major dip around 300 Hertz and you want to compensate for that so how would you do that I would go peak EQ here and I said correct it around 300 Hertz so let's there and there was a 2 dB dip and so to compensate it we need a, a positive 2 over there and you can change the Q later um, and save your design let's try to run it there so you, you'll observe as soon as as we add more modules of course there's more resources that are gonna be used by the DSP so this is a simple starting point uh, how people you use our boards to create their designs so we use audio weaver as the software of choice so that we can make all these changes um, this is very what I'm showing you right now is just a, it's a simple version of it in our um, in our website and even for our customers we give them a starting point file and we integrate other features like switches and all the other possible things that they can do with our hardware. Uh, so kindly check us out at danvillesignal.com and thank you for your time.